Hi, I'm John Lasseter. I'm the director of Toy Story, A Bug's Life and Toy Story 2. I want to welcome you to Pixar Animation Studios. This is our brand new studio. Come on in, there's a lot of cool things in here. So at Pixar, we have this center atrium, and this is where all the things we do together. We have Cafe Luxo here, we have the mail room, we have foosball, very important here at Pixar. There's Pete. Hey. Pete Doctor is the director of Monsters Incorporated. Thought we'd give him a tour of Pixar. Go down to the Tiki room. Well, this is Mark's office. He's done it up like a Tiki lounge. The pineapple is the symbol of hospitality. So we're going to go see Andrew Gordon's office. Andrew moved into his office, and then what did you find? Well, I found this air conditioning vent. And he found a whole nother room in there, an alternate reality. So this has become the love lounge. Come on, let's go in the love lounge. Okay. You have to crawl through. We have every dignitary that comes to Pixar, and they're starting to sign the room. So we have Randy Newman here, Michael and Jane Eisner, Steve Jobs, Roy Disney's right there. Ooh, molasses chips. Thanks for another wonderful time at the Love Lounge. Come on in here, this is my office. I love toys. Oh, who does that remind you of, huh? There's Steve's office. You want to see Steve Jobs' office? It's the cleanest office at Pixar. <laughs> this is our main theater. And everybody's gathered to see our new trailer. They're overly dramatic here in Pixar Projection. A Pixar Animation Studios film. What makes Pixar so special is not the bricks and the steel and the wood of the building. It's the people that makes Pixar. Joe Ramp. Joe Ramp is, is a, my head of story. I do Heimlich the Caterpillar. <laughs> Darla Anderson, producer of Monster Incorporated. Anderson, co-executive producer and co-writer and co- He's co. John Cars. Glenn McQueen. <laughs> I always believe that if you're having fun making the movie, it's going to appear on the screen. Okay, stop, whoop, stop, stop! This is where we get our creativity. Oh, I just had an idea there. <laughs> it's called uh, Speed Golf. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead. Pete's really good. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Doctor. <laughs> International symbol of Hawaiian shirts, big flowers. A few months ago, we had the first annual Pixar Air Show off of this bridge, and we had a paper airplane contest for the whole company. It was pretty cool. Oh my gosh! You can see we really have a lot of fun at Pixar, but our main passion is our work. Our people work so hard. They work really long hours making these movies. But number one to us is to make a great movie that audiences around the world will enjoy. That hard work, creativity, and sense of fun has combined to create films that we are all really proud of. To date, Pixar has earned 13 Oscars, one Golden Globe, one Grammy, and a bunch of other awards for our animated short films. Hi, and welcome back to Pixar Animation Studios Animation Talk. And all the talk is about the first film we made right here in our new Pixar studio, Monsters Incorporated. <gasps> Thank you for coming to visit Pixar Animation Studios. Bye. Bye. Okay, there's two things I know. One is that toys come alive when you're not looking. And the second is there's monsters that are hiding in your closet at night. Those are things that I was sure of as a kid. My monsters are very clever. They uh, were very good at disguising themselves at clothing, as clothing. So you'd sit there in bed. I would sit there and I'd look up and there's a monster and you kind of look away and look back and you'd stare really hard and, oh, it's my shirt. Okay, you know, but yeah. But they're, they're pretty good. Sullivan had a little bit of a problem. He was working late and accidentally lets in this kid, 
right? And the whole thing was a complete misunderstanding. He didn't mean to do it. He's the best scare that, you know, that there is on the floor. Um, uh, and he, even he's not really sure exactly how it happened because there's this door standing there. It's completely odd that somebody would be working after hours or whatever. You know, the doors are, are kept on a pretty strict, locked up, uh, you know, they're, they're well taken care of. So you, you don't just let doors out for anybody. You know, they're all, it's all high, high security kind of stuff. So the fact that there's this door here on the scare floor is really odd. He goes up. He looks in, there's nobody in there, he can't quite figure it out, and suddenly there's a kid running loose. And this is big news. This is the first human leak of a, an actual kid running around in the monster world ever in history. And it's completely unheard of. Of course, everybody is totally freaked out and panicked about it, as they should be. Human kid running around in the monster world. Kids are raw energy sources. Yeah, you definitely can see that. And, and looking at Mary uh, Gibbs, who did the voice for Boo, she is just a spitfire ball of energy. And you know, it's kind of a challenge. It's not like working with most actors. Most actors, you say, uh, could you do, you know, read this line, and, and really, it's as though you're in a lot of pain or a lot of anguish. And Mary's not going to give you anything she doesn't want to. She just runs around. In fact, even getting her to stand in front of the microphone was too much of a challenge, and we ended up moving the microphone around on a boom to chase her around. Pete Doctor worked on uh, Toy Story um, as a supervising animator and helped co-write uh, Toy Story with us. And uh, we had a blast. I mean, at, at Pixar, it's really such a group effort. You work, you work together in, in real tight groups. But um, as we grow as a studio, we're going to have more and more movies being directed by lots of you know, really talented young people here. And Pete gets to be the first. <laughs> I remember Flashing when we first still. pitched this to all the TDs. Uh, the, okay, there's going to be a little kid. She's going to have this big floppy shirt, right? And then there's going to be uh, these and furry like monsters running around, and they're going to be jumping and moving a lot, and all the fur has to act, you know, act look real. And yeah, they were <laughs> starting to sweat a little bit. They're like, no, it can't be done. Yeah, impossible. And then they got, and, but then, then you challenge oh, them to say, no, come on, you can do it. You guys you are smart. You're awesome. <laughs> Come on! All right, but he can only be on screen for 10 minutes sure, in the film. Sure, okay, fine. We'll do that. <laughs> and then, right. of course, we ignore that and go right. A big movie with a t-shirt running all over the place. And he's in every shot of the movie. In every shot. And they go, you lied to us, John. I didn't lie. The story changed. The story. <laughs> right? <laughs> The story is so important in, in both the humor, but also the heart. And I think in Monsters, that's, that's, what su that's what's going to surprise people in Monsters, how emotional it is in places. And it's really amazing. Well, I've been on this film for five years since came up with it to, to when it's released. And I think, well, definitely the thing that's been the hardest to, to do is just get the story to be just right. Get those characters, the relationship, believable, the, you know, the sort of between Sully and Boo, I think, is really key, and between Sullivan and Mike. You know, we worked really hard on a lot of special effects, but the story was the hardest thing to do. Late one night on the scare floor, Sully goes back to pick up some paperwork that was forgotten, and he sees a door sitting in a door station. No other doors, just this one door sitting there. And of course, he assumes that somebody left it out, and he, he goes to you know, check the room and make sure nobody's in there before he sends the door back to the door vault. And what happens? He accidentally lets in a little two-year-old girl, Boo. 
completely freaks out. You know, again, pure energy. This little dangerous girl in this world. A little child has never gotten into Monsters Incorporated. And Sully let her in. The top guy, the top scare, let this little girl in. So, of course, he completely freaks out, worries it's going to ruin his reputation. He's worried for his life. Hightails it out of there with Boo and then has to figure out how to get her back. One of the most exciting things on this movie was that we did get to create this world from scratch. I mean, nobody knows what a world where monsters live in might look like. There have been a lot of different interpretations of it you know, through time. But we had an opportunity to create a really unique, original vision of a monster world. And it was a lot of fun. Sully is uh, really the best scarer because he knows his business. He knows how to creep in, how to pop up that right precise moment that it's going to get the most scream and the best quality scream. You know, it's an art that you just don't walk in and go, boo, you, gotta, you have to build the tension. When Sully and Mike are confronted with the, the, the fact they've let in a child in the monster world, their first reaction is, Bah! First of all, they're both really funny guys. They both have an incredible sense of humor, and they both are amazing um, show business veterans. So the, the wealth of knowledge between the two of them and the anecdotes that they come up with in telling stories to each other, um, that kind of thing is great. Um, and the years of experience, so they're just, you know, pros, complete pros. Sully is great. He's the number one scare at Monsters. He's like a natural athlete. He's the Joe Montana. He's, he's, um, he's just completely gifted. He was born gifted. He comes from a long line of scarers. He's big. He, he seems imposing. Um, and he is exactly what, you know, a kid might think a monster would look like. It's true that they do want to scare you, but it's truly nothing personal. They're just trying to, to harvest the scream, to run their world, and it has nothing to do with you. Trust me, it is just these guys coming in, doing their job. So, you know, it's kind of sad that we take it so incredibly personally, because monsters are really, really great. Sully's a, uh, just an all-around nice guy, you know, the, you, you can't fake being a nice guy. He's just one of those guys who's just born with charm, uh, charisma, and humility. And, uh, he, uh, and he's just got such a work ethic. That guy just it wants to be the best at his job, and he's not out there to do it to get any accolades for it. He's just out there to do what's best for Monsters Incorporated. He's a, he's a real trooper. And uh, I, Monsters just like him. He's just that kind of guy. I don't think anybody should really be scared of a monster because uh, all along they've never been meaning to do anything but just, you know, power their world and get some scream. They're just coming to get some gas, basically. This film's always been a film about a uh, big hairy monster dealing with a small child. The small child is wearing a t-shirt for much of the film. And all of a sudden you realize that we have to deal with hair, we have to deal with clothing. 
two issues that computer graphics hasn't dealt well with in the past at all. You definitely have to look at things a little bit different when you're animating Mike. There's, there's one shot that called for him to bang his head on the table out of frustration. We sort of looked at the shot for a minute and then realized, you know, he doesn't really have a head to bang. He'd be banging his eyeball on the table. So, well, I mean, uh, there's not much we could do to work around it, so he's banging his eyeball on the table. Have to work the sound effect, I guess. So squish, squish, squish. I think the most poignant moment in the film is when Sullivan uh, actually sees what scaring children means to Boo, to children, in the, in, in, in through Boo, uh, and realizes what he's been doing all these years and the effect it's been having. And um, I think that a lot of us do things in our daily lives just like Sully does, and we don't understand the effect it has on others. And uh, for me, that's a very, very poignant moment in the film. If our animators had to animate every hair on that fur and move it, they would never get around to the main character's movement or finishing the film. Uh, so we had to figure out a way for that hair to move automatically. And that's the genius. All of the fur on Sully moves completely automatically. Our animators just move the character and then computationally all the fur figures out how to move itself. And that allows us to achieve a level of, of visual complexity that we never could without this, this, this dynamic, intelligent fur. And we're, we're putting more and more of that in our films, these autonomous elements that know how to, in essence, animate themselves. We have a, uh, a character there who has a job, and at some point he has to ask himself, is, is he benefiting the world in the way he thinks he is in this job? And it's kind of a question all of us might want to ask. In our job, are we contributing to the world or are we not contributing to the world? And sometimes if you ask the question, you may not like the answer. And sometimes monsters may not like the answer about what they're doing in the world. And it's about the character who has to you know, live up to that question and, and why he would ask the question and what answer he would, he would come with. Are we any different than that? And I would like to think that we do question what we do and why we do it. Misunderstood and monster are two words that always go together. The mummy, Frankenstein, the werewolf. These people are completely misunderstood. Yeti, poor guy, he's just out in a cave. Totally misunderstood. They've been really abused all this time. Well, Sully, James P. Sullivan, is a fantastic monster. Big, fantastic scarer. He's the lead scarer in Monsters Incorporated. He's the one who knows it all best. But the fact is, he's got a heart of gold. Big, scary guy, heart of gold. 
Well, Mike Wazowski is the one who learns the most in this movie because, of course, Mike comes to understand not only what kids are, but he also really comes to understand the meaning of true friendship. And he also, most importantly, understands that there's more in life than just career success and greed. So Mike makes the biggest journey, even though he's the littlest guy. Boo. Boo is a human child. A human child who, through bizarre circumstance, ends up in Monstropolis. She's an innocent, and she's non-judgmental. And so when she meets Sully, who should scare her, she has no preconceived notions. And so she embraces him, and thus he in turn will come to embrace her. Well, the great thing about this song is it does go back to the essence of the movie, which is two friends, Mike and Sully, lifelong best friends, roommates, partners at Monsters Incorporated, but they're torn apart. They're torn apart by a crisis in their world, which is the entry of Boo. But when they reconcile, they're stronger than they ever were before, and the song really says that. You know, it's interesting. When you look at the films of Walt Disney and the films of Pixar, you see one similar quality, which is always striving for new innovation, always striving for something else. And of course, in Monsters Incorporated, you see the Pixar animation take a huge leap, a huge leap in its quality of look, its huge leap in its modeling, its style. The technology is really at its peak. Studios is coming. Walt Disney Studios.